Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Skinny Jean Gardener Show with me, your host, Lee Con... Actually, never... Wait. Lee... Lee Connolly, how are you all doing? Hey, we're about every Monday to Friday chatting gardening. I'm right, five days a week chatting gardening. That's right. But hey, what if I can't sit at 8 p.m. every Monday to Friday and watch your stuff, Lee? Wow. Wow. Actually, there's a way you can listen, and that's by listening to this skinny Gene Gardener podcast because we wrap up all the best bits, and there are some best bits, right? I know it's amazing. Uh, we wrap all the best bits up into a beautiful podcast that goes out every Sunday called The Skinny Jean Gardener Show. Uh, and you can listen to it, 12,000 of you every day download it. And I, I mean it. I thank you so much to everyone that listens to that. I really appreciate it. So, hey, if you're about today, cool. Maybe not, might not be about tomorrow. I get it. Listen to the podcast, peeps. Listen to the podcast. I'll put the link to that in the description. But if you just pop to your podcatcher, and uh, type in Skinny Jean Garner. I'm sure to rock up. Uh, tonight, everyone, we are talking gardening, well-being, uh, and also, well, garden for well-being, and also, we've got Alan Mary on. Very excited tonight about that chat. That's coming up tonight. And also, I'd love to hear from you. So if you're up for it, let's hit the intro and get on with it. Cecilia. Cecilia. Or Pacilio. You just read it off the... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm on. Oh, I can't hear you, on. <laughs> I've done something wrong with the thing. Anyway, elephant poo is what I got. Good evening, Lee. How are you? Great, mate. Your, your, your signal is always terrible, but I'm good, my friend. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. You got an allotment? When I go, don't put artificial compost on top of me, all right? Are you going to get composted, Lee? Yeah, I'm definitely... Well, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine this is like the Zen shed on Costa's thing, right? Calm music. Tonight, I'd love to hear from you. If you get a good feeling from garden, if it's helped your well-being in the past... Well, forever, really. <laughs> However long it's lasted, especially the last year. Put it into the comments. Got two minutes. I'm going to get on the show. Like I said, it's all up for chilling tonight. All up for chilling. Ian Beddo says, don't do too, anything too exciting. I'm washing up. Unbelievable. Phone lines are going to be open for the first 15 minutes of tonight's show before we get into the interview. So if you want to call in and tell me how gardeners helped your well-being, love to hear from you tonight. Kirsty Wooden House. It's like a start of a drama. How are you doing, everyone? Uh, welcome to tonight's show. Phone lines are open 0742 357 4520 if you want to call in, 
or click the link in the description if Garden has helped you over the past, well, wait, let's say over the past year, definitely, because I know we've had about 2.4 million. No, it feels spooky. Yeah, I know, right? 2.4 million. <laughs> this is, hang on. It is spooky music, this, right? <laughs> Scooby Doo's going to come out. Uh, 2.4 million new gardeners in the past year, which I think that gardening has massively helped us get through the pandemic uh, that we have uh, experienced in the last year. Um, especially me, like throughout the summer, and I've got this interview coming up with Ellen, uh, coming up at quarter past tonight. The past year, right? has been hard, isn't it? I think since doing this in September, you guys who watch regularly have seen me go through ups and downs and uh, some days looking pretty rough on him and some days looking pretty good, like today. I'm I've got a new shaver. The garden has been one of those things which uh, has definitely helped. I think in the summer, I, I used gardening as an absolute tool to cope with everything that was going on. Kept myself busy. Kept myself out. Good evening, Lisa. Kept myself outside. All of me were outside a lot more. Um, homeschooling didn't feel as bad. Summer had something to do with it. Don't get me wrong. The sunshine definitely helped. Come October, I've not been able to get outside as much, not been able to do as much, and I made a decision this year not to do any projects in the garden. Whereas the years before, literally since I started gardening, I've done a project every winter. Every winter. I've done a project, except from this one. And I've realised it was a big mistake because I haven't been outside as much and I've felt the effects of it. In fact, it really highlighted how much gardening helped me throughout summer. So I don't know if any of you guys feel the same. Richard Suggett says, gardening has brought us all together, which I think is so true, right? Like all of us, I mean, a lot of us on here, like, hey, how are you doing? All right. Without this show, it brought, it brought us all together. You guys have kept me rocking and rolling throughout the winter. Come summer, I'll be like, don't do one, Beddows. I won't really. I need them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Garden has brought us all together over the past year. Uh, and one of the great things is uh, what I've recently, through what I've experienced through gardening and, and also what I've lost uh, through the winter, and gardening um it made me realize that actually garden is pretty important to my uh my mental health and uh i don't really talk about that a lot and uh yeah i find it really, diff I find it really difficult to try and explain how that feels that that, that sort of feeling because it's not it's not something i really talk about a lot and I struggle with that. I don't really know. How, I don't really know what to, how to speak speak to you guys about it. But I've realised it, and that's one of the biggest things. And you'll see in this chat with Alan that I've got coming up beforehand. I was. I think I know. And I know some of you might might say, "Oh, Lee, that's not very nice." And I was. I thought beforehand, or this whole pandemic and everything that's been going on, I could, you could have almost said if someone come up to me and get went. Oh, I'm feeling a bit down. I'll be like, come on. Just, just, I, I, I think I might have been, I think I might have been one of the man up people. That sounds bad, doesn't it? Maybe I wasn't like full on, oh, just, just man up, mate. I wasn't that sort of guy. I just was, I just, because it had never really affected me that much, I just really probably maybe didn't understand it as clearly. And uh, I spent, I've spent a good last eight, nine months maybe. Uh, looking into that a lot more, it's doing bits for myself as well, and thinking about that. Um, so I think I've, I should I should explain that no one has ever come to me and said I'm, feeling, I'm not feeling great. Lee. I've never gone, man up, mate, man up. I've never done that, but uh, at least uh, this year I've sort of felt it a bit, and um, and yeah, gardens, the gardens definitely helped me along that along that line. Uh, Gardeners brought us all together, says Lisa. So blessed to have met so many lovely people through the community. I'm guessing she's talking about everyone else in the group. Uh, I know, I know uh, you feel it helped. 
I know how you feel. It's helped my mental health so much. You know, I think there's going to be loads of people in that boat, Lisa. I think it's just it's good. That it's it's a it's a, a it's probably maybe the word coping mechanism is not the right word, but for me, uh, that's how I feel. Uh, I know that at the moment I'm I'm so ridiculously busy with this school plan. One of the biggest things at the moment is I'm not really got. A, I mean, we're a foot in the snow right now, peeps. It's like winter wonderland out there. Um, so not been able to get going. One of the biggest things is just being outside and, and going walking and being part of nature. And I realise that that's a big thing for me. That like, that's a big thing. I've got a new project coming up in the year. Um, that I'm another garden that I'm building. I'm excited about that. Uh, that's sort of keeping me going uh, for that summer. But just being outside is massively helping me right now. Massively helping. I know loads of people feel the same. So I know that gardening for me is 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 a job. It is a job. I mean, me sitting here chatting to you is part of my job, chatting about gardening. But also, it's massively important to keep me feeling. That's not really a word, is it? If you listen to that on the podcast, that means nothing to you. But just keep me on a, uh, a good level. Uh, that's how it feels at the moment. Uh, so you, last night we were talking about sowing seeds. And this Friday, everyone, this Friday, Chili Friday used to be something I used to do, which is a bit of fun. In fact, this week, even though I still stuck, stick by it, I still stick by it, uh, I feel like it's a little bit early to sow chili seeds, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited that at least something has started in the soil. Something started uh, tonight. The reason we're talking, hey, the reason we're talking about this is we've got with the fantastic Alan Mary coming on to the show. In fact, I'll be honest with you, we did the interview uh, last week. I think it was. Uh, I'll, I'll try to be as honest and and straight with it. As, as possible and i think it was a good you know alan and me have known each other for a while so it was quite easy to chat to her and um, but she brought together and we're going to check this out after the interview later tonight a brilliant well-being studio uh all about gardening which i think is fantastic it's so comprehensive there's so much on it and we'll try and check it out as much as possible if you want to check it out if you uh then it is at alanmarygardening.co.uk well-being studio if you want to check that one out peeps um so if it's cool with you, we're going to have a quick ad and then we're going to get into the interview. Is that cool? No one's got a choice, but um, but there you go. Let's add it. Advertly, away you go. Thanks, Lee. I'm hashtag advert Lee. Hashtag advert me. I'm here for one minute throughout the show to say, hey, you can support the show just by clicking the link in the comments. That's right. On that link, you can get amazing merch like this. Ugh. Check it out. New logo Ooh, on a T-shirt. You can look cool just like me. You can also pick up this amazing Skinny Jean Gardener book. Oh, it's so good. It's on offer right now. Plus, you can buy Lee a cup of tea. But the biggest way you can support the show is by clicking thumbs up. That's right. Thumbs up. So go click it right now. Share the show to your mum, to your nan. Whoever will listen, because that is an advertly order. Back to the show. Right, let's get into it. After this interview, I'd love to have uh, a couple of you on. If you fancy chatting about your own experience, it'd be really good to get you on. Uh, at around quarter to nine tonight. But throughout this, let me know in the comments what you think, how you're feeling, uh, and if Garden has uh, touched you in the same way uh, as it is. But, uh, this is a terrible way of explaining it. Retouched me. <laughs> a terrible way. Let's, should we just go with it? Yeah, let's get into the interview. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> That's all good. Welcome uh, to the show. I, I feel like actually uh, we've had you on here before, right? Yeah, I think I've been on before, but I can't remember what we talked about. I don't know. It must. Have, I think it was a long time ago as well, like yeah. way back when. But I do remember chatting with you on your podcast. I remember when you done your all nighter, and uh, yeah. I called in, and I was in America, and you, and it was like 
three in the morning or something at your end and we had a chat. I hope that kept you awake a little bit longer. <laughs> Richard literally carried me through that. So um, <laughs> so, um how's things been? It's been all good? It's been all, it's been all good. Yeah, as good as it can be. Well, hey, someone might listen to this in like, 2025 or something and then not even know about it so just yeah. pretend it's all good and uh yeah. uh we'll we'll rock on it's like never know anything was going on in the world <laughs> yeah sure we'll, we'll be forgotten about we'll be we'll laugh about this one day i think one day we will look back and be like do you remember that crazy time where we all just sit, had to sit at home for like a whole year and everyone's gonna and everyone's gonna be like don't be crazy. That never happened. <laughs> so many conversations I've had in the last couple of weeks and people are like, oh, remember we went away last, like when we went on holiday last year? And I was like, we didn't go anywhere last year. Like, it's <laughs> like so many conversations, people have like basically wiped out 2020 out of their mind. Yeah. Just pretend it's 2019. 2020 never happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not a thing. Uh, <laughs> um, the reason I've got you on is because uh, Gardening for Wellbeing. What is a garden for well-being for people that might not really know? Do you mean gardening for well-being in general or the website? Right. Let's go in general to start with. In general? Let's start from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, start, man. <laughs> well, I guess that like gardening and nature and being outdoors we know is good for our well-being and Fortunately, there's been a lot more studies and recognition of that, especially during lockdown, even though we're not really meant to be talking about that. But people have really kind of caught on to that need to be outside. But when you garden specifically for well-being, you might be looking at, you know, doing something that's um, helping you in like your own mental state or perhaps even physical so like you're you're actually purposely going into the garden to do something for your well-being so we know that like going in the garden is good for us and we can all go out in the garden and feel better after we've been gardening or, or maybe worse if we're like aching <laughs> equally <laughs> but that's a good ache right after mm -hmm. a hard day in the garden um but actually gardening for well-being is sort of being a bit more mindful about it kind of focusing on certain tasks that will help you feel better in like daily life so like I always say things like sowing seeds is just such a focused activity you know like you can't do other things when you're sowing seeds like you can't multitask can you when you're sowing seeds I'm a, I'm a man so t technically it never happens anyway you can't anyway no. This is very stereotyping here. But yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. when you sow seeds, like you have to concentrate on sowing the seed. Yeah. And um, talking about multitasking, multitasking is actually really bad for your brain. So focusing on doing one job at a time is not is actually scientifically proven to be better for you. So you're more likely to do a better job, be more productive, more efficient, and actually like focusing on the task at hand. So like gardening for well-being is specific, is kind of specifically going out there to do something for your own well-being rather than it being like the general going outside it's really good for you that's amazing but kind of thinking a bit more about what it is you want to achieve yeah i hear you because the, 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 re the reason I, re I really wanted to get you on one because of your um your website thing that we'll come to in a minute thing um but also before this like it i mean i don't know I think probably before last year, well-being and gardening, I think for me, we didn't really, I mean, I know it was talked about a lot, but it never really connected uh, with me personally. I know other people um, talked about it and stuff, but I thought it was a bit like, yeah, I love gardening. Like, I just do a bit of gardening and that's it. Like, I can't really understand how the well-being thing comes alongside it. And then no, last year, it is, uh, it is, I sort of personally realised the connection between that. And in the past six months, I've not actually been able to do much garden for various reasons. But um, I've realised that my personal mental health has gone downhill because of that. So I think it's a, it's a really important thing to, um, to talk about and, and yeah. also get people to understand because, I don't know, I might actually might be on my own. I could be like pulling a Jim Davidson here and saying, oh, I don't really believe in well-being. <laughs> but you didn't think I'd reference him today. And <laughs> <laughs> no, where did that come from? <laughs> Unbelievably, people still listen to that one. Anyway, <laughs> um, 
I so, I, so beforehand it wasn't really a big thing for me. And do you so do you think that talking about it a lot more and getting people to to realise that is is important? And do you think you have to experience it first before you really get un, like understand it? I th- yeah okay. So I I think that when we garden, we you without you knowing about it when you were doing more gardening like prior to the past six months say you were feeling the well-being benefits of it but without realizing it because you were doing other stuff in life this is the same for anyone so we garden and we think we've got to do it because we need to mow the lawn or we we need to get the bulbs in for spring and we kind of see it more as a a thing that has to be done uh but you've got all this other stuff going on so the kids have got to go to school you've got work happening so you don't really focus on the fact that it's doing you good and it's only when you take it away that you then realize that oh hang on a minute you know actually that was doing me the world of good do you know what i mean and i think that that's what's happened during lockdown so you know all the craziness of of work i mean i'm not saying that you know being at home isn't hard like homeschooling kids and everything still got loads to do but you don't have all of that mad white noise going on like the pressure to put on all the right clothes like literally i'm wearing the same sweater for the third fourth fifth day in a row i don't know but like it doesn't matter does it yeah you you know you haven't got to have all that added pressure being places doing things meeting up with people which is great and i miss it but like you have all of this stuff you know Mm -hmm. and when you take all of that stuff away you realize that what actually you need for your well-being is 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 nature is gardening that's our intrinsic link we are nature we're just another species on the planet the same as every other species so it's like we have that link and when it goes we realize how important it was to us in the first place and then over the past couple of years obviously there's been a lot more chat about mental health which is brilliant and uh, i so i think it's sort of come hand in hand with that a little bit so you yeah. know mental health in general is obviously way higher up the agenda now and the tv shows and celebrities and royalty even like talking about you know the importance of talking about mental yeah. health and so i think those two things have kind of come in at the same time and then also we have this whole you know the climate change stuff and we've got david Ast- on tv telling us you know all about the planet and what we need to do and and uh, and other things so i think it's like a realization almost do you know what i mean that when you know it, it's like a holistic approach to it. our mental health matters we've taken away all of the white noise going on we're being told the importance of climate change and all of a sudden you have this realization about how good it is for you yeah. so i think it has become much more important over the last sort of couple of years definitely uh, it isn't any more important than it ever has been, but I think that it's, it's come more to the fore. You know, we're sort of understanding it better. What well, um, you've I feel like you've been banging this drum for quite a while. Like, what made you sort of focus in on this sort of gardening? Uh, yeah, I so I guess like I've been gardening for four years. I know I don't know why I ever say that because it gives away how old I am. But yeah, like. Uh, <laughs> 40 years and then on the times I like during the times I haven't been able to do it I've really felt it you know I've been like there's something missing I don't really feel quite as buoyant or as happy whatever and um and then in my early 30s I had like a major I guess like life-changing thing that happened and the one thing that kept me sane was was gardening and it was then so that's about 10 ish years ago I decided to stop talking about the fact that it made me feel really good, but to find out why. And so mm. when I was sort of researching into that, so yeah, I've, you know, I think it's been a good 10 years or so that I've been trying to say, look, it isn't just that it makes you feel good. Like, let's talk about why it makes you feel so good, mm-hmm. like the importance of it. Um, but that, I think a lot of people discover how important it is to them when they have had something really big happen in their lives, you know, yeah. like an, and then they realize just how much they really need to connect with outdoors it's like helped so many people hasn't it i think so and like i say like over the past year or so i feel like it's obviously people have ventured outside a lot more Mm. and used it as a almost a coping mechanism i suppose yeah Yeah, exactly and i just hope that it carries on you know because eventually when we can all go out and be bit more normal like I hope people don't forget how important it was you know to go for walks in the woodlands and you know grow your first carrots or get the allotment don't give the you know lots of more people have taken up allotments but like don't give them up when you have to go back to work kind of thing yeah that's true I think I think it will 
I don't know. I, I, we talked about that a lot last year, actually, about whether because Garden obviously had a big spike last year, yeah, uh, and uh, whether it would come back. And I suppose this year is going to be a bit iffy anyway with people going back to work. So maybe another year, yeah, uh, we'll uh, like cement it into people's minds a bit. It's more. so exciting, though, isn't it? Like to see loads more people get into gardening. It's amazing. It is. It is so so nice. You think that's like the future, you know? It's like this. There's like a lot of new people coming into garden, like especially younger people. It's like that's the future. It's ace. Um, I literally because of you, I can't like we've been on so many uh, walks through woods and forests and stuff, <laughs> and because of you, I cannot walk past a tree without thinking, Alan would hug that. <laughs> <laughs> like every single one. <laughs> every one. That's a good. That's a good hugger. Uh, see? You I, when I, you look at a tree, you see a good hugger sometimes. I've tried. I mean, Olive get something from it i have tried hugging a tree i don't know this energy i've not felt it yet maybe i've not hugged the right tree uh but what is this tree hugging thing about well it's it's about kind of like everything like this sounds really wacky but just bear with me okay I'm with you, mate. so like obviously bear bear with me tree hugging's like always had this like hippie connotation hasn't it because Obviously, like, I think it all came from a lady who who chained herself to a tree to stop it from being uh, cut down in the 70s or something. And she was a hippie, so therefore it had this hippie connotation. And even before that, like, there was some record um, back to ancient times where a whole village of Native Americans, uh, like, basically held on to trees in their village to stop them from being cut down. So tree hugging is, like, has this connotation of, like, protecting trees. But... Uh, scientifically again like everything vibrates everything on the planet is vibrating and trees just vibrate at a different frequency to our bodies so essentially cutting out, out all of that scientific stuff because I'm no scientist when you come into contact with the tree it balances your body so it balances the, the vibration so but it's a bit like just getting good vibrations if you like <laughs> so like you know you know if you could play that song though that would be acely you know give I'll, that i had it somewhere i don't get copyright <laughs> but we'll do it <laughs> um and whether you believe in that or not i think is is regardless i think if i think when you touch a tree or come into contact with a tree or look at trees be around trees we know that it it reduces our blood pressure. So we know that it reduces stress, stress and anxiety. We know it re reduces blood pressure. Studies have shown that um, it even reduces like um, in, uh, insulin, uh, blood sugar levels for diabetes that don't have insulin. Uh, it improves cognitive abilities in children. I mean, there's just like a million reasons why it's good for you. And if it if it is the placebo effect, you know, when you hug a tree, you feel good, who cares? Because you feel yeah. good. I always think that. Do you know what I mean? Like when people are like, well, does it, you know, is it scientifically proven? And I just think, who cares? Like if you hug <laughs> a tree and you feel good, you're not doing anyone or anything. You're connecting with nature. And if you walk away and go, oh, that was cool, you know, great. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> what more research what research do you need you know um but the research does show that it is meant to be very good for you anyway so i think when you're hugging a tree lee and you come away and you're like don't really get it i think that you're probably not relaxing and you probably feel like you look stupid or do you know what i mean or like oh this is really weird i'm like hugging a tree do you know mm -hmm. what i mean so you're like blocking it just relax Maybe it's the fact that I've not actually hugged anyone for uh, over a year now, and maybe that's why the tree is <laughs> not giving the same energy. I don't know. <laughs> it's not quite the same. It isn't. It's different. Um, but I've got a T-shirt that says "Hug Trees, Not People," which I thought was very relevant right now. <laughs> I think trees are standing there going, "What the heck is going on at the moment?" I love that. <laughs> yeah, I think you should try it again, but I think you should relax. Okay. Well, well, um, just don't care about anything else in the world who cares what's going on who cares if someone can see you whatever blah blah just relax and breathe even if you just put your hands on you don't have to hug it hug it just like i'll keep you up to date with that progressive uh tree hugging <laughs> your, <laughs> your uh your website has um got a new well-being studio which uh 
I found quite interesting. I've looked at a good. I mean, there's so much to look at it. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. I, so I'd been thinking for ages about having like a well-being studio online where people can go to just to read other people's stories, you know, about well-being, how gardening's helped them, and um, and then trying to incorporate other stuff. So it's not maybe just gardening, but other nature-related things. So like, there's loads of crafts and art that's amazing and it's all based on nature so I've been thinking about this for ages and then um I'd already sort of made some plans and I was going to have a separate website for it and then um the the lock the last the net current lockdown kind of came in and I was like well there's kind of no time like the present is there uh, I'm not going to get another website to begin with let's see how it goes mm -hmm. and uh, so designed like the studio on my site and really it was just to try and help people you know connect with other people who love plants for well-being so I realized that like people plants well-being I kept trying to think of a name for it and I was like why do I need a name for it it is about people plants and well-being so I was just like that's as simple as that really <laughs> and I think like people are always inspired by other people's stories so I just thought like it's about connecting with the person behind the product art craft garden whatever um, and we are so disconnected from people at the moment. So I know it's still online, you know, but I thought that was maybe a nice way to like connect with people and yeah. just see how well-being has kind of helped them and little hints and tips and stuff. And I've had so many contributions that I'm now having to get another website because I can't <laughs> keep it all on my website because I've run out of space. <laughs> <laughs> That's good that people want to share, right? It's amazing. And, you know, I always remember being told ages ago that people don't like talking about themselves, but I really think that's true. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, personally, I love talking about myself. Like, uh, <laughs> I do it five nights a week. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, people want to share, like, people want to share their stories. Like, uh, sort of going back to what I was saying earlier, like, without really knowing people's personal experiences, it's that sort of brings it to life a little bit more well anyway for me personally reading other people's experiences brings it to life a little bit more rather than it being um i mean i, I use kids gardening as a thing get kids gardening as like a buzz buzzword but unless you really know schools and parents experiences you don't really feel connected to it so i, I suppose it's the same for well-being yeah, it's just, it is. Like, we can say all of the time, oh, gardening's good for your well-being. But, like, the very first question you said to me is, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? What is gardening for well-being? But when you read some of those stories, you start to understand what that actually, what that means by, from, like, real-life people who've yeah. experienced it themselves. So it's really just sort of bringing people and plants together and uh, trying to, like, connect people, you know, so that they can see how beneficial it really can be. Yeah. What well, um, you've got some talks coming up as well, some Zoom talks as we yeah, uh, like. I know, like I had a like you know, like last year everything was on Zoom, so Zoom, 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 and uh, I actually got really bored of Zoom. Like, <laughs> you know, I was just like, I don't want to be on here anymore. I've just had enough. So I had a few months of Zoom, of off Zooms and webinars and all of that. Um, but I think if the topic is something where people can connect and that's really really important and there's some there was just some amazing stories and like you know some of the people who are doing the some like some of the talks they're just such inspirational people like genuine down-to-earth people who have experienced how good gardening has been for their well-being and yeah. so um i just asked them if they'd be happy to like do a little half an hour to an hour max chat you know tips their story you know just giving some guidance you know about how you can be a mindful gardener or how you know how they specifically have used gardening for well-being and then we've got someone talking about house plants and how good they are for well-being i'm going to do like an art one where you can do watercolor painting and stuff just oh. like just really relaxed chilled you know free just meeting the person behind the you know the art or the garden or whatever so yeah i'm looking forward to it it's and i just i just want it to be chatty you know like we're just chatting like i want it to just be relaxed and that's how it should be it also gives a like i mean we're not really gonna have any shows this year are we i don't know let's not put too much of a down on it but uh it also gives a voice this year to to that because without you doing something like that then 
people's stories won't be told in, in that sense. Yeah. Usually someone will be on a stage somewhere or a show talking about it, but obviously not. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, there's a lot of people who are really well known out there who will still somehow or another get seen or heard because they can, they have the platform too. Like it might be that perhaps they, I don't know, do something online themselves or like I keep seeing like new courses online coming out from all kinds of people and, you know, the RHS will perhaps provide a platform for some people to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's a lot of people who are, have these amazing life stories and I think they, I think they should have a chance to, to say, because do you know what I mean? Like what, you know, they might see people at the shows and have a little chat and stuff, but you won't perhaps often see them up on the stage or, yeah. or certainly not being pushed out there at like, you know, at some of the shows, and certainly not during lockdown because. All the big organisations will always go for the the big names. Oh, you know? we know what the we know what the talk circuits like. It's like <laughs> you're a, you could be the worst speaker in the world, but if you've got a name, then you're sorted. Yeah. Look yeah. at Michael Perry; he makes a living out of it. <laughs> yeah. I had to get a dig in on him. <laughs> I had to. At some point, at some point, he had to come in, didn't he? <laughs> um, but oh yeah, <laughs> it's, but, you know. <laughs> I just genuinely think like there's there's every day amazing people out there who have amazing stories who've done great things for people with people for themselves and so I'd like to use it as a bit of a platform to get them seen and heard too. Are you doing, are you doing them throughout the whole of the year? Have you got a, a, a long list I'm, coming up? I'm gonna try to do like two a month maybe just because I, oh, it also means that I probably need to be on the call or to at least make sure it's all set up and everyone's there and ready. Um, and then at the moment, obviously it's quite a lot of admin for me to sort everything out whilst I'm still trying to transfer all of that information to a new site. So I think I'm gonna do it every other week and then we'll just see how it goes. Like, and I never really want to charge anyone for it because I just think it's about, you know, it's more than that. It's about like that connection with people and plants, and I'd, and that should be free. Really. Yeah, it's, um, I think you're right. I think it's a really nice thing to do. It brings people together as well. Like I, I mean, I've been doing some group uh, talking things in the past couple of weeks, and uh, it gives people a focus as well. Like in the week, I, I might I do my thing on Monday, and uh, I look forward to it. Like it's mm. something to focus on. Do you know what I mean? So mm. uh, having these sort of things keep people going at the moment. Do you know what I mean? I think so too. Um, do you know what though? I did do a talk for Garden Club the other day, and you know, on Zoom, when like you see everyone's faces, like in the squares, there's loads and loads of these faces. And I thought, oh, this is really nice. These are like people. I'm talking to people. But then I thought afterwards, I literally don't know what I would do in a room full of people now. I don't know if I've forgotten, like, any, is there like social etiquette? Do you have that? What do you say to, when you say hello? Do you just say hello? Like, do we hug again? Do we continue doing this? Like I, I've, I, I have no idea. What, what, right. I, I literally don't know what will happen when I walk into a room of people again. <laughs> anything but the, don't give me the elbow. I hate the elbow. Uh, elbow is weird, isn't it? Is I think it's. I think it is going to be strange. I think we're almost going to have to learn to speak to people. Like it's easy chatting over here, right? But yeah. face to face, we might be like, I'm sure we won't be. But we're like, oh, hey. Um, it's either going to be like, I think it will either be a little bit awkward, you know, kind of everyone's a bit, sh should we get close? Shouldn't we get close? Can we hug? Should we hug? Or like, you know, or it's going to be manic where we're all going to go, wow, yeah, that's people. Woo, give us a hug. <laughs> <laughs> High five all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, show me your vaccine. Oh, you've not had it. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. that's gonna be a whole that's gonna be a whole nother uh that's gonna be a whole nother thing in the future isn't it we're, we're yeah. learning to connect with people online at the moment but learning to reconnect uh face to face is gonna be a whole yeah nother. it's a bit it's a bit like uh reconnecting with nature like we we are you know we are nature but we disconnected a great deal you know we moved into the digital world forgot about nature and now we're all sort of learning to reconnect i suppose so we should all yeah. join happier people though right yeah 
Ah. <laughs> 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 And have you brought, like, in my head, I feel like you've brought a book out about this. <gasps> am I not? Oh, like, it's coming what? out soon. It's I am coming... like, you've not, like, re- told me quietly, have you? Like, this is no. news. Uh, this is news. Well, so I think I've mentioned it, but literally twice, maybe. Gen- like, Stuck in my genuinely. Head. Very, I, I haven't gone big on the whole, on the book thing yet, but in um, a couple of weeks, it's the cover uh, release, and mm. then I don't know if it's pre-order at the same time. I actually have no idea. I wrote the book and then gave it to someone else to deal with. I don't know. Um, the cover release is like in a couple of weeks, and then I guess you can pre-order at that point, but it comes out in May. But yeah, I wrote it. I started writing it before lockdown last year, and and finished it um uh during lockdown i can't remember what month but actually lockdown was quite handy for that because i'm not entirely sure how i would have finished writing it if we weren't in lockdown oh that's so exciting (laughs) what is the title just anna mary life stories oh no you don't don't want to hear about it uh i uh, am I allowed to? I don't even know if I'm allowed to say what the oh, title is. Don't say it if we're going to get in trouble. I, you know, they yeah, might... feel like stupid, right? Like, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to. There's only a title, but it's someone will yeah. mind. Yeah, it's only a title, so it really shouldn't matter. But I just don't. I no one said that I can say it yet, so I'm. I'll. I'll be good and not say it. But suffice to say, it is about gardening and well-being. <laughs> it says it's okay. We'll guess. We'll guess later on. <laughs> 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 oh well thank you so much for chatting to us thank you so much for having me it's nice to chat with you it's always nice to chat with you you make me smile i try i try my hardest are you gonna <laughs> oh, oh, man like are you gonna have like a book launch well, not in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> mm-hmm. that's a really bad time to launch a book right we have to, well i launched mine just before the pandemic so it could have been <laughs> <laughs> Could be worth <laughs> <laughs> At least you know what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, but your book would be good for people in lockdown to help, you know, you know give ideas for kids in the garden and stuff when know, they right? need lots of things to do. Plug, plug, plug. I know, right? That's what you'll, you'll get used to plugging all your book all the time. People get bored of me hearing hear about me plugging my book. You should plug I, it I, more. Keep on. Wear yeah. people down, Lee. You would never do it. <laughs> Um, Ellen, thanks so much for coming on, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. (laughs) What an amazing book. Advertly here. Advertly here. I hope the show's good for you. I hope the show's good for you. Yeah, thanks for asking. While I'm reading, this amazing. While I'm reading, this amazing. How to get kids gardening book. I absolutely love it. It's on offer right now. I absolutely love it. It's on offer right now. The tenner for the lockdown. Here we are. Let's have a little flick to see what you can be doing. Here we are. Let's have a little flick to see what you can be doing. You can create yourself. An awesome little you bug hotel for them bugs. What else are you saying? Oh, what else are you saying? Making your own mini allotment. How about making your own mini allotment? There's so much packed into this. There's so much packed into this. This is absolutely awesome. Just a tenner. Right. Just a tenner. To go get the link. Right now. To go get the link. Right now. In the description. Or the description. Wherever you're listening. Wherever you're listening. Thanks. Had to get that in there, didn't I? Uh, hey, how what do you think of it, team? Uh, you can call me 0742. <laughs> What's the phone number? 07. It's been eight months I've been doing this now. It has not that long. 0742 357 If you want to call in tonight, or there is a link in the comments. A few of you got involved in the comments, which I'll go through in a second. Uh, before that, tonight's podcast is also supported by Meet the Farmers podcast, everybody. Go check it out right now. Uh, there is a link in the description. Uh, big up to Ben Eagle. You can listen to that interview. Um, Sundays chat. It's very confusing, isn't it? Listen to his podcast on Monday, mine on a Sunday, this every day. So much, isn't there? Right? Get a behind the scenes look. 
uh, on Meet the Farmers podcast. We'll talk about more about that in the week. What did you think, guys, uh, of Alan coming on? Look, if uh, you don't mind, I'm going to go through a few of the comments. Then we're going to check out uh, Alan's website to end tonight's show and see what she's got coming up because we did mention it. We didn't talk about what she's got coming up over the coming weeks. Uh, let's just have a look what people are saying. Um, Lisa did say, I know how you feel. It's helped my mental health so much. Richard said, uh, during lockdown one, Garden helped me keep a normal standard of life. Garden became my job. I think that might have been the case for quite a few people as well. So, yeah, you're right. Because um, I didn't get to experience the, the world of, of furlough. Um, not that's a, that's a bad thing, obviously, I'm uh, luckily enough to continue with works. But I know that there was a few people that I spoke to who said that gardening at least gave them something to get up in the morning and go out and do. And uh, and our focus, we talked about focus quite a lot in that interview. Um, focus is key, team, to uh, to getting through. we got to get through this. What's this? 40. No way. Gardening must really make you feel good. My time customised on vans and racing didn't help. You should have done gardening, Beddoes. You should have done gardening. And Suggs also says, I think I got a video of Lee hugging a tree after trying to climb it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it was an accidental hug at Beth Chateau. It wasn't a... It wasn't a... Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't an on-purpose hug. I'm still looking for the right tree, team. Still looking for the right tree. Uh, right, let's check out Alan's website, everybody, because... Um, let me just pun. Sorry, Mackie's in the house. Mackie wants to come on tonight. It'd be great to hear from you, Mackie. There's a link in the comments for you. Let's quickly check out Ellen's website because she's got so much coming up, and it's a website packed full of uh, information that I think is so helpful. I spent literally an hour looking through all of this the other day, and uh, let me just quickly. Um, so there's, lo there's a books and podcasts area, which I think is fantastic, that gives you the lowdown of loads of great podcasts um, on here, including Michael Perry and Ellen's one. Uh, uh, and also a bookshop with loads of awesome books. Let's have a quick look at the books. Mine's not in it. Doesn't matter. I plug it enough, team. Don't worry about that. Um, but loads of... Can you see this? Oh, no, you guys can't see it. Oh, I'm not going to change screen. Anyway, loads of great books on there, podcasts and things that you can get information from. Then, whereabouts is it? Ah, here we go, studio sessions. This is something I'm well excited about, and we'll be checking out over the coming weeks. Uh, next one is actually on Thursday with Kirsty from My, My Little Allotment. I'll be watching that team, uh, which I'm excited about, 7 p.m. if you want to sign up to that. Absolutely free, which should be good. Houseplant care, which I, can, I could actually really do with, right? With Donna from Pretty Cactus Plants. That's on the 18th. Is so that next week? I could actually do with some house plant care tips. Them little, them little black flies I was talking about. Yeah, they're back. They're back, team. Uh, then what else we got? Uh, ter terrarium making for well being uh, is on my birthday. I could do a terrarium making for my birthday on my own. That'd be great. And what else we got? Learn some cross stitch basics. I don't know if I'm a cross stitcher. Are you a cross stitcher thing? I'm not so sure. Uh, but anyway, some great sessions on there starting this Thursday. If you want to check them out, which is rather an exciting team. Uh, also, there's loads. I mean, loads of different people's experiences around guard. Oh no, this is not the bit I wanted. Hang on. Right there. Is this the bit? And where's the bit that I wanted? That's the people bit. There is some good bits there. There was more somewhere. Hang on. Some food? Well, actually, if you just look in everywhere. Oh, look. There was, where's the, maybe the, pe maybe the people bit is it? Right, anyway, look on the people part. There's loads of people's experiences on there. There's also in the plant section again. Uh, a whole host of people talking about how plants make a difference. Uh, community is Sarah Venn. Perry's talking about winter containers. 
Um, we've got orchids, herbs, uh, flor funky florals. What else have we got in here? Oh, and products. Let's have a look what products no, she's got to put down. Um, actually, before we actually before we crack on with that, right there. Rose, rose pressed garden, seed balls, alpine and grasses. Go check it out. It's Alan Mary Gardening.co.uk. Wellbeing Studio. Yeah, Wellbeing Studio. Um, we'll keep you busy for uh, a good hour or so. <laughs> and Ian Bellows asking about the um, thing. Because he says, yay, excited. You are coming to watch me and Ellen. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a good Thursday. Uh, continuing this good Tuesday is this man, Mr. Mark Mackey. Hello, Mark. Hello, mate. How are you doing? So I've interrupted you while you're working. No, 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 no. That's fine. Now, I, I was just uh, refreshing my memory um, because um, Ellen Mary brought up some brilliant points earlier uh, about um, plants interacting with one another. Uh, yeah. This idea about vibrations is actually uh, there. There's some, there's some real science behind it in as much as that for many, many, many years, we've learned that plants produce chemicals which other plants can detect. So as an example of that, um, uh, trees in Africa, when um, giraffes start eating the leaves, the trees communicate to the other trees that there are giraffes around and start making the leaves bitter. So the giraffe herd moves on and they only graze a little bit. And so it's little and often. Uh, and, and that means that the, the, the trees don't get completely decimated by the giraffes. Right. Um, similarly, you may have seen on um, uh, social media these amazing pictures where if you're in a forest and, and you lie on your back and you look up through a canopy that the, the the leaves don't touch in certain plants in certain tree species now they're reacting to touch and to light so the leaves all move around based on um, the maximum sunlight because all the trees in the community want to get the maximum sunlight to be able to grow healthily uh, similarly uh, back to my uh, stuff, <laughs> um, the fungi below ground have been shown to be able to communicate to all members of the plant community that are connected to the fungi. Really? Um, so it is, um, uh, I, I don't know if I've already mentioned this before, but the BBC did an experiment whereby they grew uh, a, a tub with three bean plants in uh, they put aphids on one, green fly on one, put bags over the other three so they couldn't actually get to the other ones. But through the below ground community of the mycorrhiza, they managed to communicate, hey, I've got aphids over here. You chaps, you need to start producing your, your natural defences to be able to, um, uh, to, 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 to to make yourself less attractive to them. Um, and um, yeah, so this idea that um, you know, plants have this vibrational element is is not completely off the wall it, 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 the, 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 there's stuff we are learning all the time um, um sorry i've still got lady antebellum playing on the back oh, sorry lady a playing in the background i hope you can't hear that yeah crack uh, on. I, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and i'll put my hand up that um you know back in the day i used to be a tree hugger i used to be a hippie and uh, i i have hugged trees as well so uh, yeah I'm just saying. That. Well, I'm still looking for the right tree, as I said earlier, mate. Um, a, it's a bit like um, a, a little tangent. It's a little bit. Have you ever watched The Matrix? Oh, yes. It's a bit like The Matrix because old Neo, he sees the trees and, and bits. So a bit like that, isn't it? So, technically, anyone that's watching, watch The Matrix, and that will tell you exactly how yeah. uh, trees communicate. Uh, and, and Avatar as well, the James Cameron film with the great big blue aliens. Yeah, that was all interconnected. Um, and to completely geek out on you here, um, the new Star Trek actually has a, the, their spaceship hyperdrive is based on fungi and the interconnectedness of the universe, being able to travel those routes. But we'll get away from the fungi and I'll leave you on a passing note, which is a, a Shakespeare quote. There are more things in heaven and earth 
that are meant in your philosophy, Horatio. You never know what's out there. It's a big, beautiful, wonderful world. It really is, mate. It really is. We're, we're literally just scratching the surface, eh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Aki, always lovely to hear from you, my friend. And uh, I'll speak to you later in the week. Yeah, you take care, mate. Nice one, dude. Uh, the fantastic Mr. Mark Mackey there, and a little bit of a uh, little bit of backer music for him <laughs> as well, right? <laughs> so true, yeah. Uh, Matrix is a great educational film. There, yeah. great educational film. Interesting about the beans as well, right? Um, plants are just—I I really can't get over the power, and I don't know. This is the thing as well, yeah. I talk about gardening a lot. Hold, hold your horses, everyone. The Sugmeister General, how are you doing? I'm very well. I've had better days, to say the least. So I just thought I'd ring up and try and get a hug. Uh, well, we could uh, <laughs> we could arrange that, mate, somehow. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, what's been going on, man? How was uh, how was um, how was things? Um. Well, we, well, as you know, we've had two funerals today, so we're a bit... Um, double heavy. Double heavy, to say the least. So it's listening to your show and what Ellen has to say tonight. It's really kind of struck a chord today. Yeah. Because uh, you don't you don't realise how fragile people's mental health actually is until the worst thing happens. Yeah. Or something happens to to for it to stumble, and it could be something that just hits you out of the blue. Yeah, um, and we and we all go through these sort of things, and this is why I'm, I'm absolutely in love with what Ellen is doing with her well-being studio because it's making it obvious that we're all in this. We all go through these situations. We all have these things that that happen, but learning how to deal with them is the way forward. Yeah, definitely, man. And I'm I am uh, dreadful at explaining myself. And the one thing, the one, <laughs> but the one thing that that studio and the sessions and things, uh, which is good, is uh, that there's people who are very good at explaining their their feelings and and their experiences. Uh, I have yeah. a lot better than me. And I think that hearing that sort of thing and reading it does help people. I, I actually completely agree, and I also think that you and I are, we're both um, blokes, Now I don't want to sound sexist when I say this, but we have an element that when you get with our male compa compadres, that we're not meant to be upset by things, we're not meant to, to be down and up, we're, we're meant to, as you said earlier, what was it you said, um, pick yourself up or something. I said, man up. I don't think I've ever said that no. to anyone, but I have had in the past, I must say that I'm, everyone, uh, well, I'm always learning personally. Um, yeah. But that's the feeling I've had on, on that sort of thing. I don't have that feeling anymore. No. But uh, no. But maybe that's the, that's the go the geezer inside me. Do you know what I mean? I, I think it's a thing we've, I mean, it's getting easier for males to accept that now, but I do think there's a lot of males out there who struggle to, to accept when they are feeling down and, and it goes for females as well in that matter but I think males have this element that they're meant to be the tough man you know nothing's meant to bother them Yeah. and we all know that's not the case we're all human at the end of the day and we've all got to uh, get, uh, get on with our lives yeah it's, um, it's true I think I don't know I think it's a little bit um, people take talking a little bit better now uh, um, yeah um, I've, that's, I've found that anyway well, that, that's what I was actually going for when I was saying about the, the males having to be hide these sort of things. Now we're talking about it. It, it. I think it makes it easier for people to realise what's going on and to say, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm not right." Yeah, um, it's good to talk, man. Like, uh, I, th I think you know the garden hands out. The garden out, you know, one sense, but talking to people is, is definitely. You know, we've had some good chats and stuff, and chatting to you and, and some other peeps does help me, man. Like chatting is is, is uh, getting us through this. Yeah, definitely. I think things also with, with modern technology these days, things such as your live show, where I think the live shows often feel like there's a group of people chatting, like we're down the pub or something, but we're we're just not physically in the same room. Yeah, yeah. 
But I don't, um, I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I enjoy doing this show, Richard. I don't know if I could spend too long in a pub with some of these people. Well, I mean, I know Ian Bellows can be a bit difficult, but oh, yeah, I know we're, we're both thinking time. of the same person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you, really, Ian. Yeah, we love you, Ian. Really, we love you, Jack. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, yeah, I really enjoyed that chat with Alan. I just, uh, it, I think, talk like even just talking about that side of things, man, for me, getting personally helps me think about it more, and. Um, you know, something it's not something you, I always think about, but um, but when when we talk about this stuff, stuff like tonight, I'll go away, have a little think, have a little write in my diary, and and see how I can improve and and see how I can um, not only help myself but help other people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can think of several instances where I've spoken to you and something's happened to you, and you've just sort of almost shrugged it off. Giza. But sorry, Giza. Giza, Giza. But I know I'm, I'm reading between the lines. That's not really what you're you're feeling. No. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like I say, like, I'm always learning. And like I say, this is the reason I really like, because on the Wellbeing Studio with Ellen, there's people on there that have experienced stuff and are really, you know, I'm not saying, like, you know, out there and like, oh, look at me. like. But I'm saying, like, they, they're good at ex- telling their experience and i'm i'm not good at that at the moment still i'm still really yeah. bad at that um yeah but i think hearing those stories has really helps people yeah because um, yeah. it makes you feel like you're not on your own i, th- I yeah i totally agree with that i think it, it makes it easier it brings everyone down to the same level yeah yeah i think um yeah yeah that's what is one of the things i did i briefly mentioned it in the in the uh, interview earlier, I do this thing on Mondays. It's just a group chat, and uh, we all just talk about how we're feeling that day, yeah. how our week's been, and we don't really give advice or anything like that. It's just everyone, and you, and through that, can't tell you how much it helps me. Yeah, because again, it makes you feel like you're just not not on your own. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but there we go, man. Definitely agree. Uh, it's good to talk, dude. Yeah, likewise, likewise. There's a BTO about that, wasn't it? Good to talk. Uh, yeah, we're sponsored by him now, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Suggs, I hope you um, obviously I hope you have a, a better week, man. I'll, I'll chat to you tomorrow, right? Yeah, all right, dude. You have a good one. Nice one, Fal. Chat to you later. Cheers, dude. Bye. Bye, man. Um, yeah, like I think this is a pretty pretty serious show tonight, and uh, I really do. I like I, just, I say I've got you know bits that help me. This really helps me chatting to you guys. I know a lot of you get involved each day. Um, this really helps me chatting, and I think it's great. And um, I really appreciate all you being here and uh, and keeping us going throughout this. Um, I'd love to hear from you. You can message me privately if you fancy it. That's absolutely cool as well. Lee at skinnyjingarland.co.uk if you want to email me and I'll get back to you on there. Um, or call in it be cool to hear your feedback every Monday to Friday. Keep rocking, guys. Keep rocking. That's rubbish advice. Imagine if someone comes to me, I'm not. If someone comes to me, I was like, I'm, I'm not feeling great. Keep rocking. Just keep rocking. It's a tough one, isn't it? Maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cassie says, uh, "I hope okay, Rich." Send love to you. Yeah, we all send love to you, Rich. Uh, I've, I've, Richard did mention that it was a bit like uh, being in a, a pub and all of us chatting, and I suppose it is. I suppose we all we're all. Uh... Is this a new thing? Chatting, chatting, chatting. That's about Beddows. That's what we're here for, dude. Um, right, that's it uh, for me tonight. Thanks so much, Alan, Mary, for coming on the show. Thanks to you, team, for chatting in the comments, and to Mister Mackie and Suggs for calling in. Uh, some interesting chat tonight, and we'll probably progress it. Hey, maybe we'll bring it back up again on on Good Mood Mondays uh, next week. Um, that'd be really cool uh, if you fancy coming on and chatting about that and, and letting me know our gardening's sort of helping you out, getting you through it. I really do think that us talking, like Suggs coming on, Mackie, um, people coming on 
two might be easier than Latin. Uh, people coming on here and chatting. I, like I said, I'm not great at it. I'm still learning to 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 uh, explain myself better, you know, and uh, share my feelings and stuff. Um, but uh, you guys coming on, sharing how you're feeling, what's going on, uh, it does help other people. I think it's really important, and uh, we'll continue to do that throughout the year. So uh, there you go. Right, team. Back tomorrow, Instant Gardener. That's right, Instant Gardener tomorrow night. Uh, we're having a watch along. We're having a, I think I'm calling it a watch party now. A watch party. Uh, we're watching Instant Gardener, one of my favourite gardening programmes. If you want to call in throughout that and continue tonight's conversation, I know we're only about for an hour, but very much welcome uh, to come on uh, for that. That's it for me. Have a great day tomorrow keep it positive like i say uh drop us an email if you want to chat very much uh love to hear from you um, but for now until tomorrow eight much love Cecilia. or pacilia you just read it off there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i'm on oh, i can't hear and on <laughs> i've done something wrong with the thing anyway elephant poo is what i got Good evening, Lee. How are you? Great, mate. Your 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 signal is always terrible, but I'm good, my friend. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. You got an allotment? When I go, don't put artificial compost on top of me, all right? Are you going to get composted, Lee? Yeah. I'm def- <laughs> <laughs> hey, advert Lee here. Enjoyed the show? Good. You can listen to the best of episodes on the podcast every Sunday. That's right. Lee uploads it every Sunday. The best of podcast. So get out of bed, grab yourself a cuppa, and pop in the headphones, and you can listen to the best of the week. Or we have some absolute corkers. Go give it a listen. But from me, Advert Lee, and from Lee, see you next time. Bye bye. This is a Sunday game of Gardener. Who said that?